Why did I have two? Because I gave my idea. Because I don't have one. <laughs> Clerk will call the roll. Lynn Whitley, County Judge. Here. Roy Charles Brooks, Commissioner Precinct 1. Present. Andy H. Wynn, Commissioner Precinct 2. Here. Gary Fickus, Commissioner Precinct 3. Here. J.D. Johnson, Commissioner Precinct 4. Here. Constitutes a quorum. Thank you. Our invitation today will be delivered by Tom Spencer, our own uh, from the Tarrant County Tax Office. After the invocation, please remain standing for our pledges. It's my privilege to pray with you today. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, on this day of decision making, we pause to acknowledge you as creator and ruler. We praise you because righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. We praise you because you're more powerful and more loving than we can imagine. Thank you for your word and that's always true. We thank you for the hope you've given us and that the best is yet to come. We thank you for your guidance and instruction. We thank you for bringing us into the family business. We thank you for our families, our children and grandchildren. Keep them safe. Help us to walk with you along the path of peace, knowing there will be difficulties along the way, but we can face them confidently in your strength. Help us to learn to thank you for each problem we encounter and watch how you transform trials into blessings. Help us to realize you don't call the equipped to do your work. You equip the called. Help us to seek the need to take advantage of every day and enjoy the opportunity to serve our fellow man. We pray for protection for all those in harm's way. Guide our thoughts and decisions today. For it's in Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Thank you, Tom. Agenda announcements, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Honor. Members of the Court, we have three announcements as it relates to the agenda this morning. The first one is under the Purchasing Department, item 8H1. This is bid 2018-042. This is a sale of recycled paper. There is a revised court communication in your red folder this morning. Also under purchasing item 8H2, um, this concerns the policies and procedures manual. Uh, we have added just a, a small um, bit of information in there. Also additional information. Uh, Mr. Beecham will address that whenever he comes to the podium this morning. <coughs> and then finally, members of the court, under the discussion item, the discounted burial program, which is item 11A, uh, there, is, there is some additional information that we have added uh, and that is in your red folder this morning. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Court members, uh, you have before you the minutes of our special call meeting of November the 20th and our regular meeting of November the 21st. Move for approval. Second. So a motion is second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion. Motions pass unanimously. Um, it's that time of year again. Um, we're going to hear our uh, Craig Maxwell, our own Craig Maxwell, come up and talk to us about our <coughs> employee golf winners. Ah. And once again, you're just going to get to convey that to somebody else, aren't you? Unfortunately, that is correct, sir. <laughs> Good morning, Judge, Commissioners. Good morning, Good morning. Craig. Good morning, Craig. I'm here to uh, present the Tarrant County Golf Trophy to this year's winner. This is the year number 14 that we have done this. Uh, we were very fortunate to have good weather. A very nice golf course uh, that was uh, Tierra Verde down in uh, Arlington. And we had uh, 23 teams play this year. And we have a new set of winners, a new set of – the DA's office seems to be dominating things right at the moment uh, with, the, with regards to uh, county golf. Um, she seems to hire really good golfers. I don't know how that works. And I'm sure they're really good attorneys too. <laughs> 
But uh, this year's winning team um, shot a fine score of 58, 14 under par, which uh, pretty well dominated you the... Sure they don't uh, have some CPAs on that? <laughs> <laughs> With ricers? We tried to do some auditing of it, but that didn't help much. So since they uh, won by three shots, uh, there wasn't much uh, we could do other than congratulate them on playing very well. This year's winners, which I believe <laughs> there are, uh, hopefully they are here. If, if, uh, Sounds like they may be. Yeah, they may be. Judge Phil Soros, Matt Buckaloo, Nick Vincent, and Colin Ashworth. So come right on up. So if you added all three of their ages together, you might get near Sorrels. <laughs> Y'all turn around, look at the camera. And turn the trophy around. Yeah, Shannon's trying to get, you know, so this is going to go in the DA's newsletter. <laughs> During the night, they do some legal work. <laughs> and she's got to take three, so you're going to look for three flashes before right. you can leave. Shannon, did you play? I did not know. Maybe next year we ought to require that you be on the team. <laughs> so GK made a recommendation that next year we create a separate flight for the rest of us, and then the uh, young DAs go into their own flight. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all. Next year, we also need to encourage some co-ed teams. Well, in the past, I think the sleeper, uh, the sleeper in the past has been the, uh, uh, the the DA's team with the woman on the DA's team was the one. Yeah, she played golf. And golf. How did did she not play this year, or did she get in? They come in second place. <laughs> Craig, where did you come in this year? Where did your team come in this year? I think you're correcting, but uh, the team that I was on finished second. Uh, oh. Yeah, she came in third. She came in third, huh? Okay. They're not accountants, but they are golfers. <laughs> they are attorneys, too. They can't. Well, that explains why they can exaggerate things from time to time from that standpoint. So it's a... Okay. All right, uh, next we have a congratulatory resolution uh, for the North Central Texas Council of Governments, their emergency preparedness department. I know Molly's here, uh, Mike Eastland, their executive director, is also here. Why don't y'all come forward? I'll read the resolution. Randy, you come on down too. Um, whereas 2017 marks the 15th anniversary of the North Central Texas Council of Governments emergency preparedness department, and whereas, as the events of September 11, 2001, the North Central Texas Council of Governments was asked to consider coordinating an overall effort to bring the region together in order to better respond to serious incidents in the Fort Worth, Dallas area, and whereas the Emergency Preparedness Department was created to help first responders build a network that facilitated coordination and planning among the many jurisdictions in our 16-county region and manage the Homeland Security and Urban Area Security Initiative grants. And whereas since 2002, the department has planned and hosted large-scale training exercises in the region, bringing first responders together to build relationships and identify shortfalls to better prepare the region for future incidents. And whereas since the creation of the department, the 16-county COG region has responded to hurricane evacuations, to H1N1 epidemics, wild, wildland fires, Super Bowl 45. I had to look at that to, to figure out that it was 45. I should have known that. Uh, the Ebola outbreak, severe storms and flooding and tornadoes, as well as the DPD ambush. And whereas in the last 15 years, the COG has grown, learned, and adapted to be better prepared, which could not have happened without the work of the COG's Emergency Preparedness Department and the support of our elected officials. 
Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the Commissioner's Court of Tarrant County, do hereby congratulate the North Central Texas Council of Government's Emergency Preparedness Department for 15 years of service in our region. <clears throat> in witness whereof, we have here to set our hands and cause the seal of Tarrant County to be affixed this fifth day of December 2017, and I'll move its approval. Second. second. A motion to second. Please vote. <clears throat> motion passes unanimously. Let me just say real quickly how much we appreciate this recognition, but it's really about all the entities who have made this program what it is today. We've coordinated, we helped get it started, but it truly has brought the 16 counties and so many players together who know each other now, who trust each other, who've learned to work together, and through our exercises, we have continued to perfect ourselves but as I told the elected officials back when this started, this is not a soup de jour type approach that we have to take. If we get started with this department, we've got to continue it because times are going to change, events are going to change, technology is going to change, people are going to change, and we must keep current. And you have helped us do that. And I asked GK to get in the picture because he was very, very helpful to us in the early moments of this, of bringing the Tarrant County cities and the county together to help with the formation of this. Molly is our second director, and she is recognized across the state, across the nation, as an absolute expert, and her staff have been just so instrumental in working with the people who have made this the success that it's been. So thank you very much for this recognition. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I do want to thank Molly and, and Mike both for the work that they've done in this area. Randy and David uh, from Tarrant County helped tremendously in this deal, and we appreciate that very much. Uh, I'm going to move that we receive and file the first uh, the presentation of our uh, winners for the golf tournament. Um, before we get into one of my favorite times, employee recognition, uh, I wanted to give, uh, I think, Commissioner Brooks, you have some stuff going on this week. and I do. Uh, this week, beginning Thursday, the 7th, we will have the annual Board of Directors meeting of the National Association of Counties. We will be hosting that meeting here in Tarrant County at the Renaissance Worthington Hotel. The first day and a half of that meeting is a nationwide summit on poverty, especially on the county's role in dealing with serving the underserved. Uh, we will focus on a two-generation approach to uh, eliminating poverty. We'll, we will focus first on children, in the zero to three-year-old uh, time frame of their lives. This is when the majority of brain development takes place, and this is the best opportunity during that three-year period is the best opportunity that we have to give kids the start in life that they deserve. But Giving them a healthy start in life is only half the battle. We have to deal with the families in which these children live and make sure that the kids grow up in 
opportunity in an environment of nurture, in an environment of um, support. So we will have na na national experts, including our brand new partner at NACO, the Pritzker Foundation, who will be announcing a new partnership with counties across America in dealing with poverty. And uh, everybody's invited. When is it? It starts at 8 o'clock Thursday morning. <coughs> and the poverty part will uh, conclude at uh, 1 o'clock on Friday. Then the uh, Board of Directors meeting will begin and last till 1 o'clock on Saturday. Do you need to register? You can register on site. Oh, does it cost any money? It does cost money. <laughs> this is about poverty. Yeah, yeah, but it's not true. <laughs> you can't alleviate, alleviate poverty without spending a little money. <laughs> Also, uh, we, as I said, we're, we're, you know, Commissioner Brooks has brought the fall board meeting here as well as this conference, and we appreciate that very much. We, uh, we kind of talked, and you know, it is Texas, and so we have a boot maker that is going to be at the Worthington on uh, Friday. Uh, they're going to be actually in the lobby area over on the uh, this other side, not the main lobby area where people would come in and register, but on the other one, which is between Houston and Throckmorton. And they'll be there. They'll have. Uh, they're going to offer a 15% discount if you're interested in getting you a pair of boots made, uh, or they've got boots that uh, they've already hand made that will be there. And uh, they're going to have probably about 800 pair of boots on site. Their store is just down off of uh, 7th Street, and they got about 5,000 pair of boots down there. So it's My Rod goodness. Parker, uh, and they will be there. So uh, you know if you. Lunchtime, something like that. You want to walk over and, and uh, look at the boots or do that. Again, they're going to offer a 15% discount uh, Friday there. And then really, I think it's through, um, through all day Friday, maybe even through Saturday or Sunday at their shop if you want to go by there and, and look at a pair of boots, which is, again, on 6th Street. Um, also, I'd like to take this opportunity. I see uh, Wendy Burgess, former uh, city council person from Mansfield, is with us today. Uh, she bears the burden of being the wife for our constable, Clint Burgess. And so, uh, you know, you have a special place in heaven, I'm sure. Um, uh, they've set one aside for you there. But I want to welcome you, and uh, I'm glad you're here today to, to visit with the court. So thank you very much for being here. Hi, Wendy. Thank you. Um, now is our uh, time that we get to recognize our employees. It's the first Tuesday of the month, and um, this is really one of my favorite times. I have an opportunity to call and talk with uh, those employees who are celebrating 25 years plus with the counties, but at the same time here this morning we get a chance to recognize those folks who 5, 10, 15, 20 years. And, you know, I, we say this. Um, and we truly do mean it as we we feel like that Tarrant County is a great place to live It's to work and to raise your family uh, But we also feel like that a lot of the reason for that is for the jobs that you employees do the way you treat people uh, The way you interact with the public as they come to you in whatever different point in time they are in their lives when they're coming to, uh, to To visit with or to be a part of doing business with the county so um, for you new ones, for you five-year rookies, um, I'll call your name, stand up, remain standing until we finish that particular group. Uh, then we'll, uh, uh, rec you know, we'll clap for you, and then you can sit down as I move on to the next group. Uh, I, it, I'm going to make the mistake of saying that it doesn't look to be quite as bad as it has in some months. Uh, some of your names are fairly simple, and some of them are a little bit more challenging. Uh, and so I always say this. You kind of have an idea of where you are in the alphabet. If you think you're next, and the name that I say doesn't sound anything like the name that the way you pronounce your name, go ahead and stand up anyway. 
uh, these folks up here will be glad to laugh at me, and I'll usually begin to hear the giggles start about three or four before I get to your name because they know what's coming. Uh, but please, uh, you know, I apologize up front if I butcher it too badly, but uh, we moved. I, I hadn't said this before, but we moved when they were teaching phonetics, and I missed a year of that, that year that they were teaching phonetics. <laughs> I just say that because it doesn't make any difference. They're going to laugh at me anyway. Starting with our five-year employees, Jennifer Crowder, Sheriff's Department. Scott Grazer, Sheriff's Department. Jeanette Martinez, Precinct 1. She did, you didn't bring her? <laughs> <laughs> Melissa Summers, District Clerk's Office. These are our five-year employees. Thank you. Now, I see them looking at one another. Okay, we're going to sit down together, right? <laughs> now for our 10-year employees, Philip Adams, Medical Examiner's Office. Philip. Teresa Aguilar, Public Health. Candace Bryan, Tax Office. Glenn Burton, Sheriff's Department. Michael Shane Doss, Sheriff's Department. Rebecca Ellinger, Sheriff's Department. Casey Ficus, Criminal District Attorney's Office. Antonio Gamboa, Sheriff's Department. Deanna Madrid, Juvenile Services. Kara Mordecai, Tax Office. Is that right? Nicely done. Good job. I can tell <laughs> Merry Christmas, Judge. See? See what I tell you? I just got lucky on that one. Jennifer Parrish, Public Health. Tomasita Sanchez, Public Health. Cynthia Smith, Human Resources. Yeah, brought your own cheering crowd there, I see. James Woods, Sheriff's Department. These are our tenure employees. <laughs> now for our 15-year employees, Christopher Barney, Sheriff's Department, Mark Blake, County Clerk's Office, James Castillo, Information Technology, Patricia Davis, Sheriff's Department. Linwood Joyner, Information Technology. Alma McCarty, Public Health. Rebecca McMath, Public Health. <coughs> Maria Alvarera, Public Health. Let's see if I can get this one right. Natalie Rose, the Judge's <laughs> Office. She's back there at the back. Jason Scott, the Sheriff's Department. 15 years already. Jose Ibera, Sheriff's Department. These are our 15-year employees. <laughs> now for our 20-year 20 20 employees, Anita Basic, Sheriff's Department. Barbara, Barbara Brennan, Criminal District Attorney's Office. Donna Coleman, Tax Office. Daniel Corsell, Information Tex Technology. Cortland Fowler, Sheriff's Department. Jeanette Griltz, that's probably not right. County Clerk's Office. Sandra Martin, Tax Office. Chris Peterson, Information Technology. Daryl Tennyson, Precinct 1. Kelly Walters, Probate Court 1. And Catherine Zimmerman, Public Health. Let's give these 20 year employees.
Now for our 25-year employees, Carol Ballman, Sheriff's Office, the Emissions Task Force. There, she's slowly getting up there. You can, you know, you can pop right up here. Started in the Sheriff's Department as a uh, clerk in the booking area in the Correction Center. Uh, was promoted to jailer, went to the Cold Springs area. Um, then to dispatch, you know, she said that... Nah, 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 Where'd she nah, go? Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> And to look up here, you gotta, you gotta watch these folks. It, she's had a chance to make it to a lot of the different areas of the, uh, uh, of the Sheriff's Department. She's now a sergeant in the Emissions Task Force, and they're the ones that kind of you know, try to keep everybody on the straight and narrow as far as the inspection stickers and the, the different things that they do in that particular area. Um, when I asked her about memorable moments, she says, you know, I worked in patrol, and if you've worked in patrol, you've seen just about everything. We stopped right there. Um, when I asked her what she liked most, she said, I love the folks that I've had a chance to work with and, and really the variety of the work. She said, in, in, in moving around in the Sheriff's Department to the different areas, she said, it's, been a, uh, it's, it's never been boring. It's always been interesting and exciting uh, and something that she really, really has enjoyed. Carol, thank you very much for your 25 years of service. Next uh, would have been Deborah uh, Bisner. She is in Austin today. She works in the criminal courts area uh, in the specialty court. And so if you see Deborah or have a chance to in the next uh, week or so, be sure and thank her for her 25 years of service. Next is... Uh, I've got her here. She's got about there. Judge uh, Kimberly Brown, and she didn't expect that she was going to be able to make it today. Uh, she is one of the associate judges in the juvenile area and has been there. Uh, she actually started in the DA's office in the child protection area. And then in, 99, in 1999, she became the third associate judge uh, in the juvenile area. So if you see Judge Brown, be sure and thank her also for her service. Um, next is, is Savala Swanson, Jr. Where's Savala? There he is. Um, started in the jail in the maintenance department, and then when we moved all of the maintenance, all of the uh, maintenance areas over to the facilities, uh, he was in, first off, I guess you were in the medical examiner's office, then you went to the Tim Curry, and is now uh, in the civil courts in the family law area. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, his father worked for the county for many years, and when I asked him about his memorable moments, that what really stuck out, he said it was the times when he could go and have lunch with his dad. And, you know, I thought, that's it. That, that right there is, is something to be very thoughtful of and very thankful for. He said he just loves the, the county, the way the, it's a family atmosphere. Uh, and he said, I just, I absolutely have loved the, the department that I work for even since Mr. Phillips came on board. Um, now he didn't say that, but I just thought I'd, you know, I, I just could hear that in his voice when I, when I talked with him. Uh, Savala, thank you very much for your service. Next is uh, Danny Trujillo, and I didn't get that one right. Trujillo. I got closer than I thought. Uh, Danny's in facilities has been there for 25 years. He started, he actually started in the graphics area in the printing, doing a lot of the printing, uh, was one of the lead physicians there. Uh, and then he, he, he went just about as far as he could go in that graphics area and said, you know, I'm looking for something different. And so he moved over to the facilities area in, in basically technology, repairing equipment, doing those kind of things. I guess you started doing, uh, the, the business cards and doing that. Uh, while you were over there. He said, I just love the, the people and that I've had a chance to work with. He said, I'm a people person. And I just love being around folks and being able to interact with them. Uh, he said, uh, the challenges of this job, the different challenges of the job is something that I've always enjoyed. Danny, thank you very, very much for your 25 year service. Uh, 
Next would have been Mike Castro. Uh, he's out on uh, FML, um, and he has 30 years of service. So if you know Mike, you might want to give him a call and just thank him for his 30 years of service with, uh, uh, with Tarrant County. Next is Charles Chambers. There he is, back there in the back. Started in the 30 years, 30 years. Started in the, uh, the old Belknap Jail, was in transportation for a while, uh, did accident investigations uh, in patrol. Uh, they've been in the warrants in the fu uh, warrants fugitive officer area. Uh, has been doing training, has been a training officer for over, I guess for well over 50, almost 20 years uh, at this time. Uh, he said, in a memorable one, he says, I'm glad I'm not doing accident investigations anymore. Uh, but he really has enjoyed his time as training officer. Um, he said, I absolutely love the, the people that I've had a chance to work with, the security of the job, uh, being able to work and train other folks as they've come through the department. Uh, when I asked him kind of what's occurred over the last five years, he said, uh, you know, just continue doing the job. He says you find new ways to capture people. And he specifically said Facebook. Uh, and I just, you know, it, it is just absolutely amazing what people will put on Facebook. <laughs> we constantly get reminded of that. Uh, he said, is, he said, you know, we kind of talked about, well, you know, was he thinking about retirement? He says, you know, I, I don't see my job as a job. I just see it as something I enjoy coming to do every day. And, you know, I, I think that's a, a great attitude to take. Uh, Char or Charles, we appreciate very much the 30 years of service you've given to Tarrant County. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Next is uh, Stephanie Coulomb. There she is. Started out in the district clerk's office, has always actually been in the district clerk's office. Uh, she's one of the IT folks. And so she started out in the district clerk as IT, and then when we put everybody under that umbrella, uh, she moved technically to the IT, but she's still in the district clerk's office. Um, she said, I love the stability of the job. I enjoy the people that I've had a chance to work with. Um, she's currently working um, again uh, in, the, in the IT area in the district clerk's office under the TechShare Court program. Uh, doing work on the forums and the, and the various programs. Stephanie, thank you very much for your 30 years of service. <laughs> Next is Camille Hollum, 30 years with the auditor's office. She indicated she started out in the auditor's office when they were just getting a new general ledger system was being put into place. Um, she said at all at that time everything was done through the checking accounts, uh, and there uh, they I guess now you've got one financial managers or you've got financial managers. Uh, memorable moments helping with three new systems that have been installed while she's been around, uh, and then also working with Judge Vandergriff. Uh, she said I worked with him on a particular project, and he says he remembered me, and uh, you know. It was a real honor, as many, as of, many of us have had the experience of being able to work with, uh, with Judge Vandergriff in so many different areas. She said, I really like the way that people are helpful, uh, the family atmosphere. Um, she said that she expected to work with the county for a couple of years and then move into public accounting. And she said, I absolutely love it, and I can't imagine working anywhere else. Um, she, when five years ago when we talked, she had a son in Ecuador with the State Department and a sh uh, one that was a chef in Dallas. Now, she, her son's still with the State, State Department and is in Moldova. Uh, they have one daughter, so she has a granddaughter there. Uh, the other son just graduated from UNT uh, with an art history degree. Uh, she said, I always felt like, and, and this was very interesting because she had mentioned this before. She said, I always felt like I was destined to work across from the old courthouse. She said, I was adopted. And the first time my parents saw me were on the steps of the old courthouse. Mm -hmm. 
And so uh, she really had that, that real tie to the county. Camille, thank you very much for your 30 years. <laughs> Next is uh, Joe Underwood. There's Joe. Uh, started in the jail. Uh, worked all, you know, worked on all the facilities. Uh, uh, he moved to the academy. Now he's over in the judicial area. Uh, he said, as far as memorable moments, is working uh, in the jail is just full of stories. So he couldn't tell them, or he wouldn't tell them. Uh, you know. After I told the first couple, you know, first couple of years I did this, people would tell me those stories. And then when I repeated them, they quit telling me anymore. <laughs> and so now all I get is a little snicker or, uh, well, no, I don't think I can do that. Um, he said, I really remember the, when, you know, when they went to direct supervision over in the jail. Uh, he said, I love the, you know, the, the people that I've had a chance to work with. He said it is a secure job, good benefits. He enjoys that. He said, I enjoy working in, in training and watching the new people uh, that come in. He said, um, it's, it's, just, it's just been a great place to work from that standpoint. He said, the last 10 years have, uh, have really flown by. He's actually um, looking to retire next year. Um, he's still in the judicial area. Um, he has six grandkids. His son has four, and his daughter has two. And he said, you know, that's, that's kind of what made me begin to think about retirement. I want to spend time with those grandkids. Uh, and those of us who have them, we want to spend time with them, but we always want to know that they go back home. <laughs> so after we've spoiled them and given them plenty of sugar, then we send them back home with the parents. It works a whole lot better that way. Uh, Joe, thank you very much for the 30 years of service. <laughs> okay, <laughs> there you go. Uh, the last person that we're going to recognize today is Curtis Knowles, 35 years, Precinct 1. Thank you, Curtis. Thank you. You didn't, you didn't, your brother didn't bother to get up. I mean, he's, he's still sleeping probably. His brother Tommy worked in Precinct 3 mm -hmm. for many, many years and, uh, and retired from there. Curtis actually started working for the county uh, first as a temp while he was in high school. He worked 18 months. His senior year, uh, the person who was fixing the flats and doing some of those types of repairs, which was a 3 to 11 shift at that point in time, quit. And so they had Curtis come in, and he worked the 3 to 11 shift while a senior in high school. He said, I was probably the only senior in high school that had their own apartment and uh, <laughs> a full-time job. Uh, he's been the assistant director since, I guess, 94 <coughs> or 95 out at Precinct 1. He said, what I like most is the various people that he's had a chance to work with over the years in the different cities. Uh, he said Tarrant County is absolutely a great place to work. Um, now, you said at one point in time, which was, I guess, over 10 years ago, that you had about three years left to retirement, and then you didn't retire. You just I think somebody convinced you to work a little bit longer. Um, and it, in fact, when we talked five years ago, I asked you about that, and you said, well, Commissioner Brooks convinced me that I needed to work uh, a few more years, um, that, that you were still uh, you know, younger, and that you didn't, you didn't need to retire at such an early age. That's uh, right. He, is, he said, I'm going to tell you, though, I am not going to make 40 years. He said, I've come to the calculation if I stay much longer, I'm going to be losing money by working. And so he said, I am going to be uh, retiring here fairly soon. Uh, they bought some land. He and his wife have bought some land, and they plan on uh, retiring there. And, and the dog is here. Is that? <laughs> you scared the dog. Well, that didn't work. <laughs> 
Uh, but he said, I have been doing work done. He says, I've got cattle all over at different places, and I'm going to bring them all together, and we're going to put them there. He said, you know, I've actually, in my time in Tarrant County, I've actually worn out a building. And the, I guess what happened was, as you moved from Columbus Trail out to 1187 to a new garage out there, that building, uh, you wore it out, you tore it down, and you just recently have moved into a new building out there on 1187. Curtis, thank you so much for your 35 years of service. Thank you. We are all so grateful to Curtis for his 35 years, which is actually more than 35 years because Tina won't count those years <laughs> that he worked summer starting at age 16. I don't think you can even do that anymore. Well, and, he, and they certainly didn't count those temp hours while he was working 11 or 3 to 11 in, uh, as a temp in high school. Um, so We're we still negotiating his release. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you better post a guard on him because I feel like he's going to disappear one of these days. <laughs> it's going to be a little bit harder this time unless you're going to come out of pocket with the difference in pocket. I, I think we have a meeting of the minds. <laughs> Thank all of you very, very much for your service to Tarrant County, for the way you conduct that service, and for your passion and commitment to that public service. 855 years we celebrated here today. And we cannot, again, thank you uh, so much for what you do. There are refreshments back up, back in 504C. The only thing that concerns me is I haven't seen Wilder the whole time. I haven't seen so there either. might not be anything left back there. <laughs> so y'all head on back. Thank you. Have a great Christmas, great holiday. want to. So let me let me uh, lay this out for you real quick. As you know, we have 541 uh, votes in a in a to for a total of uh, 5,000 votes that are cast uh, for these five individuals that will be eventually chosen as as uh, members of the board of directors. <clears throat> you might also recall that uh, we have nominated four individuals for this. This would be Troy Alley. Michael Lehman, Michael Donnell, and Mark Wood. If you look in the, on the second page of your court communication, uh, since the time that there has been um, nominations have been made, uh, actions concerning three of those have occurred. Mr. Alley, one of our appointees, or our nominees, uh, they, he has notified the, the Tarrant Appraisal District that he would like to uh, have his name removed from consideration. Um, also, Mr. Bennett, Johnny Bennett, has indicated that while he's not one of our, uh, of our nominees, he has also indicated that uh, he does not wish to run for another term. And then finally, um, we have one more that, um, that Belmontes, Mr. Belmontes, has also indicated that he does not wish to continue to be considered. Who? Uh, Belmontes. Mr. Belmontes, you will not see him on the front of your sheets because he has been removed from, uh, from the ballot. And so when you look at the court communication itself, you'll see the remaining groups or individuals that, uh, that have been nominated not only by Tarrant County but the other taxing entities within Tarrant County. Now, there have been jurisdictions 
that have already cast their votes, and uh, they will continue to cast their votes, um, and, which is public record, and we're trying to keep tabs on those. And so um, what we do know is that Michael Donnell, who is one of our, appoint our nominees, has already been awarded 765 votes, and it looks like um, anywhere close to 700 is, is pretty well assured that you're going to be on, on the board. Um, Mr. Wood has 468 votes so far, but it's our understanding that there may be a major jurisdiction that is also going to cast all of their votes for, um, for Mr. Wood. Um, Mr. Lehman currently has 280, I'm sorry, yeah, Mr. Lehman has 287 votes, uh, and there may be some others that are in, be casting their votes also. Because the window is closing for December 14th, and because we still have another commissioner's court meeting, if you would like, we could defer any action on, on casting these ballots until some of the other jurisdictions have also cast their ballots, which is a public, public record, and we have access to that. And that will give you a better understanding as to where we are on, um, on how the other jurisdictions have cast their votes, if that's important to you and how we place our votes. So the, in the communique, I see seven names, and you're telling me that of, of those seven names, that um, are those are all seven of those folks still in the deal? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. But I thought you said that there was a Bennett that had... If you will look on page two of your court communication. John A. Bennett is different oh, from Daniel okay. yeah, Bennett. Daniel Bennett, I guess. <clears throat> So what I hear from you is, is uh, Mr. O'Donnell is pretty much. Uh, Looks like he has enough votes to come in. Okay. I think Mr. Wood will probably Mr. get Wood in also. Well. But we'll have greater surety by next <clears throat> Tuesday if you prefer to wait. And, and that way you can cast your votes to, uh, uh, to have the, the maximum impact that you would like to have. Why don't we just cast the rest of our, our votes for uh, Mr. Uh, Lehman? Who is the the final nominee? The only the only thing is that uh, Mr. Wood, had, I, he has 468 right now, and uh, we have been told that there's another jurisdiction, but that jurisdiction has not voted yet. We can split half and half if necessary. I would suggest that you wait till next Tuesday. Quite frankly, you'll have a better picture, and and that way you can you can. Uh, hopefully guarantee that some of your nominees get on the board. Okay. Any objections? I don't have a problem. We'll hold, hold for next, next week. We'll Thank hold you. for next week. Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> Mr. Sugar. Good morning, uh, Judge Commissioners. This is a request from the criminal courts that follows up uh, the presentation from your last meeting a couple of weeks ago, and the criminal courts are requesting the funding to to bring on two full-time magistrates and two screening officers to criminal courts administration effective January 1. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. William. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We have six items for the court this morning. The first item we're asking the court to receive and follow the personal agenda. I'll move. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. The next two items are waivers. The first is a waiver for the 325th District Court. Judge Wells is requesting a waiver of 260 vacation hours. This is related to an, her associate judge who left service in the middle part of November. Uh, we're estimating that the cost to the general fund will be approximately $22,467 and some change, and that includes fringe benefits. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. <clears throat> motion passes unanimously. 
So the next waiver is for the sheriff's office. Uh, the sheriff is requesting a waiver of 177 vacation hours. Uh, he had his lieutenant uh, over patrol who left county service in the middle part of November. We're estimating net savings to the general fund of approximately $11,947 uh, and some change, and that includes fringe benefits. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. So with item number four, we're asking for a TO change for the criminal district attorney's office. As described in your court communique, this accomplishes uh, three things. We have a retitling of a position. We have a change in reporting relationships that's being requested. And then finally, uh, the criminal district attorney is requesting the creation of a project position. Uh, this individual will provide support uh, for um, an attorney for who's been called to military service. We're estimating that the fiscal impact to the general fund for this request will be almost $80,000, and that does include fringe benefits. And the $80,000 is for it's the, the uh, it's project It's for the employees. project position, and that will uh, fund the position through December of next year. <coughs> December of 18. Ms. Glenn, once the individual comes back from military mm -hmm. service, then this position then will not exist? Uh, that's my understanding. Um, that's, that's our understanding. Okay. So it's just basically what we're doing is we have a person who has been activated to military duty. Correct. And we're approving a project employee for as long as that person's gone. So when that person <coughs> comes back, this position will be eliminated. And along with this position, there, since it's a project employee, they get, do they get benefits? Uh, project positions, uh, yes, they receive all benefits except for retirement. That's the only benefit that okay. a project employee does not receive. So they don't have the 7% withheld Correct. out of their particular project. Correct, but, but they, they do get, have... They're eligible for uh, health benefits. Correct. And on that they accrue, <coughs> they accrue vacation. sick personal vacation. Okay. Correct. Okay. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. So the next item is uh, item five. We're requesting a change to the table of organization this time for JP3. Judge Casey is requesting the creation of a project position effective December 9th. Uh, we are estimating the impact to the general fund will be approximately $55,351, and that does include fringe benefits. Okay, now explain to me what we're doing here because I... Playing games. So the, the quest again is uh, as indicated is for the creation of a project position, which is a temporary position. We just described the benefits that um, uh, that come along with that position. Judge Casey's uh, position is that he is in need of assistance um, to run his uh, office efficiently. But this was not approved during the budget. No, sir. Okay. Do I have any motions or seconds? Hearing none, no. Thank you. Uh, the next item we have is item six. Um, we're asking the court to approve the annually determined contribution rate to the Texas County and District Retirement System. And Judge, if I could just borrow your phrase, it's that time of the year again. So as outlined in your court communication, um, this is about the time of the year that we come to the court. And today we're asking two decisions. Uh, those decisions, uh, if made today, will be effective 1-1 uh, of 18. So we're asking two things. We're asking the county or the court to decide on a contribution rate for the retirement plan. Again, that rate will be effective 1-1 of 18. We're also, uh, also asking the court uh, for its decision with regard to any sort of a cost of living adjustment for our retirees. Just a little bit of background. Um, as explained in your court communique, the contribution rate uh, that TCDRS uh, has uh, told us that we need to have set in place for next year is 14.3%. And as a reminder to the court, what that 14.3% does, and that's 14.3% of payroll, that will fund uh, future uh, retirement benefits for current employees 
for retirees and for former employees. So that's what the 14.3% does. In the budget this year, uh, Debbie has included 18.75%. Uh, that's the same as was uh, in place for last fiscal year. So what that does is that leaves a balance of about 4.45% uh, of payroll um, for the court to make some decisions about what you wish to do with, with the money. The 4.45% of payroll uh, is equivalent uh, to about approximately $12 million. So um, again, the question is, uh, how do we allocate, do we allocate the 4.45%? If you look at the second page of your court communique, we're giving you four options. While you're moving to um, the second page, just a couple of data points. Our funded ratio uh, as of 12 uh, December 2016 is 86.6%. Uh, and then also, uh, Commissioner Johnson, I think you typically ask uh, or inquire about, about Social Security increases. And it's our understanding that Social Security will increase um, uh, they're benefit by 2% next year. So th those are just a few data points. So let's talk about the four options. So with option one, <coughs> option one would, um, if the court elects it, would allow the 12 million to impact uh, or to help offset our unfunded liability. There would be no COLA adjustment with option one. With option two, uh, we would stand pat by that, meaning we would allocate the 14.3%, and there would be no uh, retiree uh, COLA adjustment. And again, there would be no additional pay down on the unfunded liability. That's option two. Option three uh, gives us an opportunity to try to address both. We could uh, pay down the unfunded liability but with about, or by about, rather, 5.3 million. Uh, and we could, um, the court could approve a 1% uh, COLA adjustment for retirees. And what that simply means is that every retiree would have their pension adjusted by 1%. And then the fourth option um, is more similar to what the court has done in uh, past years, is we could actually pay down uh, the unfunded liability by about $5.7 uh, and the court could approve a 50% uh, CPI COLA adjustment for retirees. That would cost about $6.2 million. I did place at your desk uh, a, just a copy of a COLA history so that you can just sort of eyeball what we've done in years past. So you can see from your handout uh, that since 2013, uh, with the exception of one year, 2016, the court has granted a 50% CPI COLA adjustment to retirees. I would like to see us do the same thing this year that we did last year and the years before except for 2016. Uh, so I would move that we adopt op option four. I guess, I guess the question I thought earlier when we talked that you said the 2.07 was what the COLA was. 2.07 is the, um, yes, this, well, the CPI index. Well, but that, that's not what this is showing because it's showing more money being spent on the COLA than is being spent on the unfunded liability. So somewhere or another, we're, we've got this, under option four, you're mm -hmm. showing uh, the smaller amount going to paying down the unfunded liability and the larger amount going to the COLA. Mm -hmm. Now it's only by about 500,000, but it's 500,000. Um, and, and we go back to the discussion that we had mm -hmm. last year and is that, you know, we've talked about paying our COLA all at one point and I understand that um, we decided against that for various and sundry reasons that we were just gonna add it to the percentage and pay mm -hmm. it out over a Right. over a 12-month period. Uh, but it seems like the COLA is costing us more money, 
and all of a sudden the amount that we're putting toward our unfunded liability is going down and mm -hmm. that's not something I like. Mm -hmm. um, I would prefer to see us continue to whittle away at the unfunded liability. I'm not saying that I don't want to give a CPI adjustment, but um, you know, I guess I just want to see more money going toward the unfunded the liability healthy. too. Mm -hmm. So I, the first question is, is the 2.07 what's going for the COLA or is it going for the unfunded liability? That at least would turn that part of it around. And then uh, do we have any clue as, I know we're past the end of the year now, uh, do we have any clue, and I'll ask this toward the auditor or budgets uh, not here, but how's our cash reserve looking in, com cash carry forward looking in comparison to what we had originally thought it was going to be? I didn't come today with that information. I'm sorry, sir. I, I don't know. I can get that for you, but I don't have that with me. I, uh, I would like for, for, uh, for this court to consider a goal of reaching 90% funded to fund our uh, retirement plan up to 90%. That should be our goal. I attended the last uh, convention, the TCDRS convention, and many other counties within the state of Texas uh, is either at 90% or more. Some 100% funded. We are at 86%, and we are having we have have been moving toward the right direction. We have been. Uh, but I think we are not there yet. I think our first obligation is to make sure that the retirement plan for the existing employees and those who have retired is rock solid. That is our first obligation, and therefore uh, increasing the funding uh, rate. <coughs> Is, is a good way to achieve that. Uh, so that's my, uh, my, uh, my opinion on that. And we did uh, seek information, uh, Commissioner Wynn, from the retirement system regarding system-wide, the average funding ratio, and uh, they indicated that it's very close to, to 90%. Actually, the, the average is 88.4% system-wide. And I believe Joyce indicated to me that TCDRS, uh, they're actually, TCDRS itself as an entity is at 90% funding, which lines up with what you just indicated. And again, I guess what I'm, I'm not trying to say that I don't want to go forward with the 50% of the, of the CPI based, but I would like to see us take and maybe increase the percentage a little bit more from the 18.75, which I know is what we passed in our budget, what, or at least what's in her calculation for the budget. Yeah. And um, I would kind of, I mean, I, do we have to make the decision today? No, sir, we have until... One more One more week. Actually, we have to get it in next week. And I would like to see us delay this, Commissioner Brooks, if you don't mind, till next week. I don't mind, but I would uh, emphasize that uh, our retired employees cannot eat that 90%. Uh, uh, that doesn't contribute to their to their financial well-being. I won't get into a lengthy discussion, but it, 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 with that 90%, they get to eat every month. Um, the, the plan itself is at 90%. It's not going to uh, so be Judge, affected by we, we us heard. being at 87 or 88. Yeah, I guess what I would like to see mm -hmm. is I would like to see what the impact would be on the 18.75 mm -hmm. if we targeted mm -hmm. around $8 million to go toward unfunded liability. And then I guess... <clears throat> I'm, I'm still confused as to whether we're talking about the six. I'm assuming that the 6.2 represents the 2.38 as opposed to the 2.07. So I want to clarify, clarify. that. Mm -hmm. Clarify that first. But that's what I'd like to see. And, and a lot of that, you know, if we had it left over, if cash carry forward was more than what we expected, 
or whatever. I, that's what I just want to know is how did we end our year now that our year is officially over? Okay, we'll come back to you. What about the gas B uh, designation mm -hmm. of the yes. COLA? Is, does that bring us any risk, Judge? Would you be in the CPA? The gas B well, I will tell you that I've got a feeling that when I think we're going to be comparing two different unfunded liabilities. We are. Um, I don't necessarily share the opinion of some of my uh, peers on Gatsby, <coughs> on a lot of things, and, but I feel very comfortable with TCDRS. And when you ask about comparative, that unfunded liability comparison, what they're saying it is, or how much we are funded, they're applying consistently among the entities that are in the TCDRS. And so I feel good about what you said about moving toward the 90%. And um, yeah, it's going to be different, I think, when we get the financials. I'm pretty sure that Gasby's unfunded is going to be different. It is. Plus, it's they're going to add in um, other things, but I still feel more comfortable with the TCDRS. Uh, I think we're moving in, in good directions. I think mm -hmm. when we started this mm -hmm. path, we were in the low 70s. Low 80s, I believe. Maybe low we 70s low as far as we, were below we go that. back far enough. Yep. And so now I think we're at 86, and mm -hmm. I feel good about heading toward your target of somewhere around 90. And I so think with, with Gatsby designating Tarrant County as a COLA entity, does that bring additional risk to our retirement plan? There's nothing we can no. do at this point in time that would prevent Gatsby from mm. already classifying us as a COLA. Re offender is what we call them. Yeah, COLA offender repeat because offender. It, COLA offender? That's what we that's call it, a repeat uh, offender. You've got to actually skip two years of COLA adjustments before you lose the designation. And yeah, so, and we're not, you know, we, we did it last year, so us not doing it this year is mm -hmm. not going to change no, the calculation that's going to be made. They're going, and, you know, and, and I think our history proves that um, historically we are going to do something for our retirees. Mm -hmm. I think we will continue to do that. So as much as I don't like uh, maybe what they're saying there, uh, I think they're, they've got a good point in this yeah. one. It's, it's usually the health benefits where I go crazy with them. Yeah, and, and just um, again, just as a, um, a point of reference, the very last document in your Handout gives you four years of uh, history. You may have already seen that, a funded, our funded ratio, and we've increased over time. Uh, tw in 2014-15, we were at 81.3% funding, and then 2017-18, again, 86.6. So we have made significant progress. Not far away from the 90%. <coughs> and, you know, I'm... I may be surprised, but I'm thinking that we may have a fairly good year on our investment returns. Fingers uh, crossed. So we'll be back next week. Sure. So come back next week. We and if we could, between now and next week, if we yes. could get some I'll, sort of an indication. And Helen, you know, from a budget standpoint, let's see what we I know we've got $5 million, I think, sitting in undesignated uh, from that standpoint in our budget. But let's just see what we do with that. Okay. When, when we bring this back next week, I'd like to see all the various suggestions of dollar amount contributions <coughs> to the unfunded liability, how close those dollar amounts, each dollar amount, brings us to 90%. Okay. Good so, question. Judge, I just uh, texted Laura, and Laura says that preliminary numbers it would be <clears throat> looking like we might have a couple million more. That would be about, that'd get us real close to the $8 million mark. Um, okay, we'll hold that for a week. Uh, Mr. Beecham. Your Honor, the members of the court, we have two items for your consideration this morning. Our first item is a bid award recommendation for bid uh, 2018-042, the sale of recycled paper. Recommendation for bid to award a pre-enterprise basis. 
according to the high bidder, Pinnacle Recycling, uh, who will be purchasing our sorted paper at the rate of $155.05 per ton. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. And our second item, uh, we're seeking approval uh, from the court uh, for an amendment to Section 25 of the uh, Tarrant County Purchasing Policies and Procedures Manual, which uh, concerns county-owned assets. Uh, these suggested changes uh, came from the auditor's office. They're very simply uh, some uh, dish, uh, definition um, changes uh, and an enhancement to the signature page uh, for verification, which suggests uh, physical observation of those assets were applicable. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Ms. Tidwell, anything you want to add or offer at this time? I would just offer that, yes, we did offer these suggestions, and there will be a report that we'll be presenting next week specifically related to uh, the physical inventory or lack thereof of physical inventory for certain county assets. And we feel that um, there should be a clearer responsibility when department heads sign off and submit that to purchasing that they are aware that the inventory has actually been conducted. Okay. Uh, any other discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Johnson. Mm, what do I have? You have an interlocal agreement with the city of River Oaks. Uh, item 8, J, 1, A, and B. Has this been approved by the DA's office? They have, Commissioner. Move approval. Second. A uh, motion is second. Any discussion? <clears throat> Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Are there any appointments today? There being none, then you have before you the claims including the addendum. Move approval of the claims, including the addendum. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the claims. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Briefing items, Mr. Baines? Yes, Your Honor, we have one item to brief the court on this morning as Mr. Worthy is coming forward. Let me say that we're not asking for any court approval on this, nor will we in the future. But this is simply a briefing item that, uh, that we want to talk with you about this morning and inform the court of an opportunity for our employees. Good, mor good morning. So um, we have been, uh, or we're going to present to you that Dignity Memorial is offering a discounted burial program to our Tarrant County employees um, at two of their local uh, memorial parks. Those two parks are Laurel Land in Fort Worth and Shannon Rose Hill Memorial Parks. The program discount um, discounts the cost of both the cemetery space and the internment fees. The program requires an initial minimum down payment of 10% by the employee, and then financing is also offered. Should the employee um, finance it for two years, there's no interest. If it's a three or a five year um, payment plan, then there is interest applied. Employees will be wholly responsible for the payment of these uh, services. There's uh, not going to be passed through, through payroll or anything like that. They will contact uh, Dignity Memorial directly and uh, make arrangements with them to make these purchases. This offer is set to expire on January 15th. The court communication originally said the end of December, um, but I believe it's now been extended that they would offer this to our employees through January. So uh, our plan is to send out an email to all county employees with this information that is uh, in this court communication and the documentation from Dignity Memorial and give them the contact information so if they want to communicate with Dignity Memorial, they can do so. Um, why would we... Okay, I'm... I'm... I'd also say that uh, Chaplain McDuffie from the Sheriff's Department was the... Was, was the one who began working on this, and uh, it, it was going to be offered to members of the Sheriff's Department, and uh, they have now said we'll offer it to all employees if they're interested at all. And what we're saying here is we just want to make you all aware of it. We, this is not something that the county supports. It's simply that you need to be aware that this has been offered. Yeah, okay, okay, but I got a question. I mean, so we're going to send out an email so when uh, ABC Car Wash comes in and says, I'll give you a 25% discount on your car washes, are we going to send out an email to all the employees? 
I think this is a similar program to uh, Sam's, um, Costco, some of those discount programs. I think we've given uh, discount tickets in some cases to some of the sporting events. Um, so that, you know, there's no pass through funds and uh, it's simply up to the employee to participate or not to participate. Well, I hadn't, I mean, I, I guess I'm going to think back then on the, what guidelines are we going to put on who has the ability to offer discounts? Um, and once we've done that, do we have the ability to say no to the next company that comes in and says, I want to give, uh, you know, if Lucas Funeral Home comes in and says, well, I want to give a 15% discount, set my table up next to the whoever this Dignity is. Dignity Memorial. Yes, sir. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I guess that when we originally it's, talked about it, I almost kind of thought this was in terms of, of a benefit that maybe the county was, that we were going to look at being a part of in that. But I'm not sure how we... Are we... Uh, we we struggle on how to how to position this because at the end of the day, what we wanted to make sure was that we were not endorsing any product or any service, that we would not have any expenditure as related to county dollars being utilized, except for one one email to say to our employees that hey, if you're interested in this, this company is is brought this forward. So my only question still is. When the next one comes in, how are you going? Are you going to say no or yes to everybody who wants to send out an email offering a discount to county employees for whatever they particularly are selling? The DA's office want to wait into this. It's an issue we can we can look at. I, I think we definitely need to ask them to look into it. it. And that's why we need to stay. It does smell good. Yes, we, we did meet. Wait a minute. Um, oh, I'm Let's, sorry. No, I want, I want the sorry. court to hear because I'm getting. <laughs> go ahead. I, yeah, yes, sir. We, we actually, um, when um, Chaplain McDuffie approached both HR and the administrator's office, we referred uh, him to have legal review it. It's my understanding legal did review it. And then in addition to that, last week, HR, legal, and the uh, Chaplain McDuffie and the administrator's office met and reviewed this and made a determination that we would bring this to you all in briefing um, to notify you of the, the possibility of offering this to our employees. There were there was concerns that the district attorney's office raised as far as anything that looked like we were supporting or endorsing <coughs> a product, and that's why that's why we are not asking your 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 authority to do this. We were just going to just make the, uh, make the assumption that we could at least put it out as an email, make sure that uh, HR would not have any role in it after we put it out as an email, and that the employees would contact the vendor directly if they were interested in it. I, I would be, be choose not, I'm sorry. Yeah, I would be concerned that a public entity like Fenton County allows one business and not others to have access to our employees in terms of marketing their products and services. That would be a big concern. I, I share the judge's concern as well. I mean, if they want to offer the discount to our employees, uh, they can certainly put in an open record request for the Tanton County employees email, and then they can email that information over. Uh, that's up to them. But if we allow this company and not others it may be problematic. I don't know how we went about making a decision with Sam's and Costco. Those decisions have been made a long time ago. I'm sure we have good reasons for that, uh, but this right here is, is a concern. I, I, Mr. Uh, McDuffie did communicate to us that he had approached several um, memorial parks, and these were the two that were willing to participate. I do not have a list of who he spoke to or who he didn't. If, if the court would, chooses us not to do this, then we won't. But well, we I would suggest that at this way. point in time, we're not ready for that email to go out. Okay. Uh, I would, and Jack, I, I'm, <laughs> um, I, I think that previously we have been, you know, because we've had companies that, with which we do business. Let's just take computer equipment, for example. I think at one point in time, we had a vendor who said, 
Uh, not only will we sell the computers to the county for this amount, I mean, amount, but we'll also make them available to the employees. And I believe the DA at that point in time, or maybe you said, state law prohibits us from being able to do that. The reason I, I remember that issue and the reason that the district attorney's office said that we probably shouldn't do that because that was a part of a bid process but the county was actually going to expend funds with a company and which invokes 262 and uh, we're not expending any funds here and and the DA's concern was that it may show that the reason we chose that particular company was because of the added incentive that uh, that they give our employees I think it was 10 percent discount on their insurance which they were doing at on a state contract anyway and so we said no we weren't going to we will we'll contract with you, but no discount for our employees. Yeah, I, I don't know about the legal side, because I'm certainly not an attorney, but they will certainly open up a floodgate. Let's say our wellness core uh, director, Amber, uh, decided to uh, come up with a discount program for uh, employees who are interested in joining LA Fitness. Uh, that's an example that uh, may be a restaurant somewhere offer a discount to Tanton County employees. We say yes to this, we have to say yes to all the others. Actually, and that's going to be problematic. Actually, I think we have a discount to the YMCA for County employees. Well, the other thing that, I, that kind of bothered me and something that one of that somebody just said was is that the chaplain went around and talked with a bunch of places and this was the one that offered the deal. So it's kind of like, did we put out an RFP or did we just ask for well, we're not we're not expending any county funds, okay, and so that that makes the big difference on two sixty two. Okay, I'm. Um, but if you all choose not to do this, then that's fine too. We're just going to see if you all make you aware of it. And obviously, that's what briefing items are for to talk about it and get your feedback. Is it my understanding the sheriff's going to do this? The sheriff's department is going to do it. I think the chaplain is trying to just simply do something good for for members of the sheriff's department, and they wanted to extend it to other county employees. That was the sole reason. But, yeah. I'm very reluctant to let the email to go out within the county because I think I don't know how we filter out who and who and who can't do this with any service that we offer from this point forward. Okay. Well, like I said, that's why we bring it to you all in a briefing session for you all to discuss, for us to discuss it with you. And, and if, that's the, if that's the choice of the court, well, then that's the direction we're going to follow. I don't think it in any way pre prevents that vendor from doing it. We just don't want to send it out over our medium of communication uh, for, that to, for that to happen. Okay. I would like some feedback from our DA's office. Uh, it can be lighter. And you don't have to right now. I'll, I'll say this. My initial, as GK pointed out, my initial concern was whether or not the county was expending any direct funds, was a participant, if there would be any legal obligation created by entering into this program. And I was assured, and I think what they've represented, that that was not the case. None of that would be, this was purely a, Passing on a piece of information tantamount to the other corporate offers that have been made. But I, I certainly understand the court's point. So I, I guess what I would just try to summarize to say, let's not send out the email now. Let's get whatever other input that the DA's office may want to give us. And then based upon that, we will, uh, you know, we might ultimately make a decision, yay or nay. Uh, or set up some sort of a policy that would indicate what we would do from that standpoint. Is that okay with everybody? It's fine. It's fine. But okay. Consider whether or not this would, if we say no, this would also preclude people from posting notices on our bulletin boards offering services. We paid for those bulletin boards. They're county assets. I mean, I, I, it can get to the point of being ridiculous. I, I understand that, Commissioner, but I think there is a difference in an email going out to all the employees and someone posting something on a bulletin board 
that everybody recognizes that some individual did and it didn't come from the quote unquote Tarrant County. So, but those are things that we probably, I mean, yeah, is that getting too deep in the weeds? It, it is until we didn't and then we find ourselves in a situation of where um, somebody decides they want to take us to court to figure out why we allowed one and didn't allow the other. And at some point, there'll be something we don't want to allow. Thank you, Jack. Appreciate you. I'm going back to Arkansas. Love your Can we help pay for the ticket? That's all we have. Uh, at this time, we'll recess our open meeting and proceed to close to discuss items exempt under section. Well, he'd do well to get the south meeting. We only have one person. Isn't there one other person that's outside of the Tennessee? Having returned from our closed session and there being no business to conduct at this time, we are adjourned. Uh, Gary is... Uh